To get things underway, let's talk to showbiz, and our resident showbiz expert is here in the Sunday world, it's Tina Calder. Okay, so we'll start off by talking about everybody's favourite bad boy, who I think is now turned good, Callum Best. He has, yes. I mean, it's per Callum, the, the interview that I did with him was him really opening his heart and, and explaining why he went off the rails and why he was going a bit crazy over the years. And of course, it has a lot to do with his dad and the turbulent relationship the two of them had. Um, Callum did move to the UK for his dad um, to, get, to get a better relationship with him. And then, of course, George passed away shortly after. And that was when he went really off the rails. I mean, he was already a young teenage guy. He arrived here when he was 19. Um, right, and then right through to, his, I think he's 27 now. So, I mean, he was doing all of the things that any normal student does. Unfortunately, he, d he was doing them, you know, in places like the Ivy and, and the bigger clubs where the paparazzi were watching. Um, and then when George died, that was it. He, he just went under and he says that one of the hardest things to do was to pull himself back out and what happened there was he did a documentary for children in need about uh, kids with alcoholic parents and he realised that that was him and they answered an awful lot of questions for him and he says he sat himself down and said you know we all know how this story ends yeah. and he didn't want it to end the same way as his dad's did. Okay, is this a publicity thing where he's trying to relaunch himself because we're seeing the wild stuff? Is this him maybe trying to break into TV or trying to get more work? Or I'm not going to deny it's definitely a complete relaunch of Callum Best, um, but he was a model beforehand. He did do acting courses and was learning um, the trade in LA or wherever it is he's from. Um, before he arrived in the UK, he then registered when he arrived in the UK to, to other acting courses and never completed them. He's back at, um, at a school in Carnaby Street. He's also, um, he's done a lot of presenting since. He's been in a lot of TV reality shows. He, I mean, I think today um, he's actually recording Come Dine With Me. Right. Um, you know, so he, he is relaunching his career, but I think it's because he's cleaned up, people are more willing to give him the work. Yeah. I don't think it's a case of he's cleaned himself up in order to be a star. I think he was that well before. What about the women now? Are they going to stay away? Because the girls do love a bad boy, don't they? Well, he is lovely. I mean, but then you only need to look at Colin Farrell. I mean, I don't think he's lost the women. I think, yes, he's lost the reputation of being a womaniser um, since he settled down. From what I can tell, there's no special someone as yeah. yet. Then again, he hasn't met me in person, so... <laughs> you never know. <laughs> no, well, you know, he's... I think that Callum has a long way to go before he finds himself a girl. Okay, right, let's move on to uh, Stephen Gately. Before we talk about the book, I am loving the new Boys Own single. I know, I <laughs> tweeted that, and my entire circle of friends, who are all rockers, by yeah. the way, completely disowned me for the week. But I, I couldn't believe it was Boys Own. I had Shazam it because I didn't know who it was, and I thought it was a fantastic um, song. I think, I think some of the words or the lyrics or the idea is taken from that Neil Young song, yeah. Hurricane. Yeah. Um, but I'm not saying that they've ripped it off because they haven't. I just think the idea behind it is, is pretty much the same. Okay, now is this true? Is Ronan single again? Yes, we found that out about five <laughs> minutes ago, which is so exciting. This is terrible. I'm taking such pleasure in the poor man's marriage breakup. Apparently it has been said this morning that um, Ronan and Yvonne are set to split, which I can hardly believe because they were, you know, the, the golden couple. They were a bit like Bono and Ali. Um, but that's it, it's all over. And maybe if he does his walk of Ireland, I can meet up with him <laughs> And this is making me look so bad today, isn't it? <laughs> right, Stephen Gately, the new book is out and you've yes. been talking lots about it the last I week. Have, um, I haven't had a chance to read it. I've skimmed a few bits of it. From what I can tell, it's very much like um, C.S. Lewis's Narnia, but like, you know, those sort of fantasy novels for kids. Um, and one guy, James Meredith, who has um, read it, he's a writer himself and a book reviewer, he was saying that, you know, it, it's a bog standard enchanting story. It's written, you know, pretty much all right. It was pulled together at the last minute after his death. Um, he'd got towards the, th the final stages. But, of course, the family have come out and had a complaint about it. In the acknowledgements, which weren't written by Stephen, um, I think they were written by his partner, it says that he had a difficult upbringing um, and that the area he lived in was, there was te rife terrorism, there was a lot of poverty and, and stuff like that. And 
And the family have come out and said, well, no, 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 Stephen, Stephen didn't grow up like that. And of course, there's been a lot of backlash from the area. And I think simple psychology, the guy wrote a novel yeah. for kids about escaping reality into a fantasy world. You know, yeah. I don't know, I'm no psychologist, but it kind of smacks of crappy childhood to me. <laughs> All right, okay. Are we going to see more Stephen Gately things popping up? Are we going to see old archive stuff? Or? Yeah, this is what worries me. Um, it always worries me when people die prematurely that what's going to happen is the stuff that they didn't consider good enough yeah. for release. Same way as Michael Jackson, there's a lot of stuff coming to, to light now as well. But this is stuff that the person themselves didn't feel was good enough for public consumption. I'm not saying that the public c shouldn't be given the opportunity to hear it. I'm just saying that it maybe shouldn't be built up as much because then what, what happens is the last memory of the person is actually the stuff that they consider to be their worst work. OK, let's talk uh, TV talent shows. and all the, uh, People still love these talent I shows. Know, Every can... week now there's a new one springing up somewhere. And of course, already we're thinking about the X Factor. Mm -hmm. You've been to Dublin to the auditions, I have. haven't you? It's fun and games down there. You know, Simon Kyle didn't even bother turning up. In right, Dublin. now, the fact that Simon Cowell didn't show up in Dublin, does that mean now we're not going to see any Irish contestants on the TV show? Well, that's what I thought. I thought that, that what would happen was how are they going to film all of that yeah. footage of them coming in? And so, Anyway, I'm, I'm assured that's not the case because I was kind of sort of intimating that it was maybe a waste of the Irish contestants' yeah. time. Place was absolutely packed, although there was very, very few lunatics. Of course, okay. I went down with the Sunday World um, you know, we went off to find all the crazy people and we couldn't find any. We found a couple <laughs> with a, you know, a leprechaun hat or, yeah. and of course, what did they do? They had a surfing leprechaun. <laughs> so when they do show it on the TV, you know, it'll be, it'll be, here's Ireland, here's Louis and here's a surfing leprechaun. Okay. Right. So who is on the judging panel? Uh, we've no idea. I can't, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's just poor Louis sitting there by himself. <laughs> I don't even think the... Louis took to the judging panel. I think it was all producers. Now what? I'm assuming if there's callbacks then, they'll be yes. called back to London and it will be set up as if it was done in, in ah, Dublin. Right. That's what yes. I think. I hope I'm not telling all the secrets of TV here. <laughs> oh well, sure. <laughs> Could be worse. Okay, moving on from the X Factor, and of course RTE have got their own fame thing. Fame the musical, yeah. The first time a big musical production has come to Ireland. And um, I have to say, it's not as well produced as the Nancys or the Over the Rainbows and the shows like that. It's, it's not fantastic. I have to say, my issue with it is um, the judging panel. And Who are the people on this judging and, panel? Well, apparently they know their stuff. Right. But I don't know if that's enough these days yeah. um, and the presenter is an Irish TV presenter but he doesn't have that Dermot O'Leary quality where when they're crying he hugs them and, and I think all of that in reality TV is, is what it's all about. Um, aside from that they did the biggest boo-boo ever last week. Conleth um, Cain who's from Lurgan he was in it and him and another guy I think the guy's name was Simon were down to the final two there must be a sing-off or something, yeah. to be fair. I haven't watched the entire programme. Um, and what happened was Conleth was told he was going home. Right. His family and friends were booing and, and crying and Simon's family were cheering and whooping and next minute producer in the air. Uh, actually, Simon, could you come back? Actually, Conleth, it's you that's through. Oh, wow. Okay. And Conleth then ended up bursting into tears, of yeah. course, because he's... You know, it's embarrassing yeah. for one, but also it, it's, you know, it, it's going from real disappointment to complete elation. Yeah. And then as we mate, getting <laughs> booted out. <laughs> it would never happen with Andrew Lloyd Webber. No, no. no. So they'd, have just, they'd have just sent the guy off. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have just went, don't say a word. <laughs> Let's just hope off call them get it. So Colin's definitely still in there. Definitely he's definitely still, still in and chance. he's singing this week again. Okay, all right, great stuff. Now finally, our very own talent show, another one coming to Belfast. This one's called Festival <clears throat> for Stars. I know, it's like, it, me and you seem to get wrapped up in yeah. like millions of these. Um, you know, we've just come off the, the tea, tea factor, factor where you were judging. weeks of that, yeah. I was doing a little mentoring. We were fighting a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it, I mean, it's fantastic. That's for the Pips charity. Yeah. They've got lots more coming up. Yeah. They are now launching Starfinder, which is um, Northern Ireland wide. They're going to be looking for bands, young acts, all sorts. Obviously, I'll get you information so yeah. that everybody can knows where to go. But Festival for Stars is the next one coming up. This comes over from the UK. Um, 
we're on the judging yeah. panel again this year, along with Mickey Modell, um, Colin Maxwell, who's the top choreographer, some musical theatre, acting, <coughs> different people. And um, one of the biggest things with this one is that you have the chance to go off into the UK to another one, and lots of the Britain's Got Talent people have actually come from Festival for Stars. Um, and lots Pharrell of the contestants went, have been on Over the Rainbow as well this yeah, year have come from there, yeah. I can't remember her name, but yeah. there is one on at the moment. And Pharrell Williams, is it Williams? Yeah. Um, and then there's two other kids that were on Britain's Got Talent who both were successful in Festival for Stars. In my opinion, it's the, the best one at the moment to okay. be getting involved in. So if you're serious about dance, musical theatre um, or singing, that's the one to be in. So in Belfast, it's Sunday the 6th of June, It is, it? yes. And um, all the details are on Facebook. Okay, great stuff. Tina, thank you. Thank you. We'll see you next week.